Good morning everyone. My name is Nikta Sarkar and I welcome all of you to today's ANSYS Virtual Academy session. We are going to be discussing quick and easy thermal analysis for the design engineer. So for the agenda, I am firstly going to talk about the tool that we will be using for doing this sort of a thermal analysis, which is ANSYS Discovery. Next, I will be doing a demonstration, a quick tour of the Discovery user interface for all those who might be unfamiliar with the tool or have not had a chance to explore the interface. And lastly, I'm going to be doing a demonstration for setting up a conjugate heat transfer thermal analysis CFD within ANSYS Discovery to highlight some of its features and capabilities. Now, before talking about ANSYS Discovery, let's talk a little bit about the average design process. When tasked with coming up for a new product design, the design engineer or the team usually have to rely on legacy designs or hand calculations to arrive at a baseline iteration. And thereafter, there's a lot of hit and trial, a lot of redesign, a lot of reiterations before the engineer can finally move on to analysis or prototyping or testing. Now, what if we could streamline this preliminary process to maximize innovation and design exploration while at the same time reduce overall effort and cost? That's where ANSYS Discovery comes in. Why? Because it allows you to explore various designs and input conditions readily and easily in this initial design process you can come up with the most optimal design that also meets your design goals. Even if you are an analyst, you can use ANSYS Discovery to both do preliminary analysis and also high fidelity simulations that will give you directional guidance in creating a better product. Now, how does ANSYS Discovery do all this? Well, it basically offers you three different modes. The first mode is the modeling mode. In the modeling mode, you can use ANSYS Discovery as a CAD prep tool wherein you bring in your dirty geometry and then use the features and capabilities within Discovery to prep it for simulation. Now, ANSYS Discovery incorporates most of the capabilities that ANSYS Space Claim has to offer. So all the tools that you need for prepping your geometry are already present in the Discovery user interface. The next and one of the most important stages that ANSYS Discovery has to offer is the Explore stage. In the Explore stage, you can use the GPU for performing real-time simulations or live physics simulations. So any changes that you make to your design, any changes that you make to your boundary conditions, the impact from those changes will be immediately seen in those real-time simulation results giving you more scope for rapid design exploration so you can make the changes to get your desired quantities of interest. And lastly, what ANSYS Discovery has to offer is something called the refine stage. After you have your preliminary design from the explore stage, you can move on to the refine stage in which you will not be using the GPU anymore, but the CPU and an under the hood ANSYS flagship solver like ANSYS Mechanical or ANSYS Fluent to perform high fidelity, more accurate simulations by incorporating additional physics. So all these three capabilities together make ANSYS Discovery an excellent tool for um, the initial design process so that you can get the most out of your um, simulation capabilities. So before we go into the demonstration, let's talk a little bit about um, some discovery capabilities and some of the newer features that are available with the latest version. Uh, the latest release version is 2021 R1. Um, as the name of this AVA suggests, we will obviously be talking about um, thermal management, thermal analysis using ANSYS Discovery. Um, you can design manifolds, heat exchangers, or use ANSYS Discovery for your electronic schooling applications. Um, now in the latest release version, you could also do coupled fluid structure, thermal simulations, where you couple 
conduction and convection together, uh, basically conjugate heat transfer using the refined mode. Uh, for flow control devices, uh, wherein you would like to do some flow CFD, um, you could use the refined stage for getting that higher level of accuracy, having the um, extra capability of controlling your mesh sizing um, to, you know, get more high fidelity results for such type of simulations. On the productivity front, um, you have some extra features in the latest release, like for example, you can look at the minimum element size in the explore stage now, um, so that it gives you a better idea of what sort of mesh density uh, is the um, uh, ANSYS discovery using uh, for getting your explore stage results. You could also transfer your model from ANSYS discovery to flagship solvers like ANSYS Mechanical and ANSYS Fluent directly from the user interface. So there are some really cool features. I'm going to be talking about some of these features as I do the demonstration. So without further ado, uh, let's jump right in and start with the demonstration. So what you guys can see on the screen over here is the welcome homepage to ANSYS Discovery. I've just launched it from my start menu. I am using um, the latest release version, which is 2021 R1. And as soon as I launch the tool, I can see this welcome section. Now I would encourage anybody who's a new discovery user who is unfamiliar with the GUI to spend a few minutes going through some of these slides in this welcome section. Uh, it'll really help you gain an overview or an understanding um, of the user interface. Uh, it's very easy, very intuitive to pick up. Um, so a brief glance through these slides uh, will help you quickly come up to speed and you know, you'd be able to set up a simulation very easily. So all you would do is, you know, click on this right arrow over here and that would take you um, through the information um, that you would need to get started with discovery. For example, here uh, it's going to talk about the three different stages and when to use which stage. You also have some buttons down here below. You could fast forward um, the GIFs or stop and, you know, pay more attention to the details. Uh, depending on which information uh, interests you the most. So for example, here it's telling you when to use the explore stage, um, how to you know quickly get results, what sort of design changes you can make, and see the impact of those changes readily on your simulation results. So here they're increasing the thickness of the bracket, and immediately you'll see a change in the simulation results. And then it talks a little bit about the refine stage, uh, when to use it, how can you get higher fidelity results by using the CPU and under the hood flagship solver. So all that information is really useful if you are starting with discovery for the first time. I'm going to move ahead to the next section. Um, you have an overview of the UI components as well. Uh, these are the components that you'll use most frequently. Uh, so sometimes it helps to know the nomenclature in case you know you're talking to another ANSYS engineer or you're running into any difficulty. Um, you know, knowing the names of these common options um, can help uh, you know facilitate that sort of a conversation. So for example, here it's talking about the stage navigator that allows you to toggle between the model, explore and refine stage. And then here it's talking about the halo, which is a shortcut to, you know, access some of the most commonly used features. Then it talks about the heads up display. This is how you would set up your simulation, your boundary conditions, etc. And then so on and so forth. Um, you also have an overview of the navigation controls. Um, this is, uh, I believe, similar to Space Claim. Uh, so if you're using Space Claim, this should be pretty uh, easy to pick up. If not, you can reassign the navigation controls in the settings section 
add to suit your convenience. And then here, you know, it's talking about some of the more commonly used tools that you would need to use uh, to change your model, change your design, and really take advantage of the discovery tool as far as design exploration goes. For example, here it's using the pull feature uh, from the Halo, and the pull feature is used quite frequently uh, to make changes to your design as your simulation is running. Uh, so it could be helpful to, you know, uh, get a brief overview of how to use this particular tool, especially if you're not familiar with Space Claim. And then one very convenient, very uh, cool feature in ANSYS Discovery is that anytime, you know, you are confused about what an icon does, what an option does, you can simply hover over that element and then press F1. What it does is it launches um, an overlay help menu and uh, that basically allows you to, you know, understand what that particular icon or element does. So for example, I don't know what this hexagon at the bottom does, so I hover over it and I press F1 and immediately there is this overlay panel that gets launched that tells me that this is the simulation information display or the SID which basically shows me what is the status or stage of my simulation run. And then, you know, you have an option of taking an interactive tour. So if you click on this um, uh, menu over here, you can see that there are some options depending on which type of simulation you want to perform. Uh, what the interactive tour will help you do is, you know, it will give you instructions uh, step by step to set up a sample, uh, say, CFD case or a static structural case. And that way, you know, you'll be able to get familiar with the uh, program much faster, much easier, right? And um, so I'm not going to go through the interactive tour, but I encourage all of you to go through it if you get the chance. Um, with that said, let me just go ahead and click on the open home page. When I click on the open home page, um, you get access to, you know, your recent files and you can click on them to launch them easily. Uh, you also have an option to look at samples. Um, these are, you know, uh, inbuilt models that you have access to through your ANSYS discovery tool so that you can take a look at these setups and understand how the boundary conditions were assigned or how the um, parameters were assigned. So if you want to do a little bit more research or digging into, you know, um, what sort of simulations can be solved, uh, again, you know, you could take a look at the samples and follow tutorials, etc. You also have a learn button on the top over here. So I'm going to click on it uh, on the drop down menu and you'll see a lot of resources available to you um, so that you can leverage those resources to get up to speed in discovery. You have your online help section. You have access to the ANSYS Learning Hub. And you also have the online tutorials, many of which use these sample examples. Um, so you can use the geometries to follow along those tutorials. You also have access to the discovery forum, uh, which is your one-stop destination to access all your um, knowledge resources, tutorials, FAQs, etc. Um, so yeah, you know, I would encourage if you're using discovery for the first time, um, please, you know, go through all these learning resources. Um, it'll be useful uh, to come up to speed with the software. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go to recent files and then choose a geometry that I'm going to be using for the demonstration today. So this is a simple valve um, and this is a solid body. So I'm going to double click on it. And we're going to be doing a CFD slash thermal simulation um, on this particular flow valve. So we have our geometry over here. As you can see, this is a single solid body. It doesn't have a fluid domain. So before we set up any kind of CFD simulation, the first step would be to extract the flow volume 
and prep it for our CFD solve. So I'm going to go ahead to the prepare tab on the top over here and choose volume extract. Now this step might be familiar to those who have been using space claim for preparing the geometry for simulation. Um, but if not, you know, you can always go back to our space claim AVA and take a look at this step in detail. So I'm going to go ahead and select the capping faces. And then I'm going to choose a seat face. Um, after choosing the seat face, I do have the option of looking at the preview of the internal volume that will be generated. If this looks accurate to you, go ahead and click this green check mark or you could also hit enter. And in order to um, make sure that all the extra options and HUD display is turned off, you can just click the escape button. So now we see that there's an extra internal volume that has been created and this gets populated in the structured tree over here. Uh, so let's just rename this as uh, fluid volume to avoid any confusion. And if I hide this, then we are just left with the solid body. Let's just rename this as solid to avoid any confusion. Okay, so now we have our fluid volume, we have our solid volume, and we can start with the rest of the setup, which is to assign the boundary condition. So we will move to the simulation tab over here. And uh, initially, we're going to set up a CFD simulation. Um, the idea is to assign two inlets, one on this particular face and one on this face, with two different um, flow rates and two different temperatures. And then this face over here will act as the pressure outlet. So let's go ahead and assign these boundary conditions. So because this is a CFD simulation, I'm going to select fluid flow. As soon as I do that, uh, the default option of selecting a fluid inlet pops up. So I'm going to go ahead and select this face, which is going to be my inlet. And I'll put down a velocity of 0 0.2 meter per second. And I also want to assign the temperature. So I'm going to click on this thermometer over here and change the temperature to 45 degrees Celsius. Now notice that when I completed assigning this boundary condition, this particular condition got populated in the physics tree over here on the left. So that is a good way of checking if your boundary condition was correctly assigned. On this side as well, I'm going to assign another boundary but instead of 45 degrees Celsius, we are going to assign a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. And here at the bottom, we are going to assign a pressure outlet and let's just keep it at zero gauge. So after we have assigned all the flow boundary conditions, uh, we can proceed with the simulation um, but I would like to draw your attention to one or two extra things uh, while setting the simulation up. One is that you'll notice that the default material for this fluid flow simulation was chosen as water. If you want to select some other material, you could go ahead and do that. Same goes for the structures material as well. Uh, in this preliminary simulation, you will notice that uh, only the fluid volume is participating and not the structure solid and this can also be verified by looking at the structure tree over here. So if I zoom in, you'll notice that you know there um, is a red mark over here next to the name of the solid body in the list. And that basically indicates that this particular body is not participating in your simulation yet. 
Um, if I were to click on it and uh, ensure that this body is participating in the simulation, then it would become a conjugate heat transfer problem, which is not um, possible currently uh, in the explore stage. So I'm going to go ahead and um, keep this solid body uh, unselected for now. And we are going to proceed with the CFD simulation as a first step. Uh, like I mentioned, we are in the explore stage right now. In the explore stage, we will be using our GPU computing to get real-time simulation results. Um, the other thing to note is that when you hover over the explore stage in the stage navigator, you see this bar that basically lets you select the level of fidelity that you want for the simulation. So right now, this is at a pretty low fidelity. I could increase the fidelity um, to the degree uh, till which I want my simulation um, accuracy because choosing a higher fidelity would basically ensure that you are refining your mesh in your computational domain. So a higher fidelity would mean that you're choosing a smaller element size. Uh, one limitation of the explore stage is that you do not have visibility to the mesh um, to you know, carry out the CFD simulation. And the idea behind uh, not being able to view the mesh is that for someone like a design engineer who may not be um, a full-time analyst or who may not have in-depth knowledge of you know, setting up CFD meshes, ANSYS Discovery takes it upon itself uh, to you know, come up with an automated mesh uh, that best suits the geometry and the application. Uh, so you don't have to worry about you know, uh, turning the knobs and getting the best possible mesh. Uh, the additional feature of resolution and size preview is now available in the latest version of 2021 R1. These two options give you some level of understanding of what kind of mesh uh, is being used for your geometry and also which areas are under resolved. So if you click on resolution, what you'll notice is that some of these areas uh, get highlighted in red and blue. What it basically tells you is that, you know, these are finer geometry regions uh, that are not being resolved by the element size that you've chosen uh, depending on where your slider is. Uh, in this fidelity bar. The other thing uh, that you can visualize is using the size preview option. You could go to any area, any section of your geometry and hover over it. And what it will basically show you is the element size of the mesh generated in that region depending on the selected fidelity. So right now it is at 0 0.93 millimeters. If I reduce the fidelity over here, then you notice that the element size has now increased to 1.05 millimeter. So I'm going to keep this at a low fidelity just for the sake of this simulation. And I'm going to deselect this for the time being. Let me also hide the solid body so that we can look at the simulation as it is running. And let's just go ahead and hit solve over here. And you will notice that the simulation starts running and the simulation information display or the SID at the bottom has this white progress bar that is running uh, to indicate that the solution has not converged yet. Also, you can see that the contour values are changing, which again indicates that the simulation is still running. Uh, right now, the fluid domain is being colored by velocity. You could go ahead and change it to temperature. And here you can notice that the inlet through which we are uh, letting 45 degrees Celsius water come in is over here. And the one with 25 degrees Celsius flow is over here. I could go ahead and change the value 
of the boundary conditions as my simulation is running and that would immediately change the results as you just saw and that is the beauty of using the explore stage using the GPU to get real-time simulation results and understand um, the overall uh, effect of your particular design I could also you know make geometry changes for example if I click on the halo over here and select the pull feature I could literally extend um, this particular inlet over here and then hit escape and you would notice that because I have changed the geometry while the simulation is running my contours have changed as well so these values keep changing as and when you keep introducing uh, more and more changes whether it be a change in your boundary condition or it be a change in your geometry so I'm going to go ahead and undo this particular change but uh, I hope you know uh, I was able to show you how you can use discovery to you know um, incorporate real-time changes during the explore stage the other thing to note is that if you switch to your flow variables like velocity you have other post-processing results available to you so you don't just need to stick to contours you could look at streamlines you could look at particle flow you could also look at the vectors and depending on you know these um, settings over here you could increase or decrease the number of vectors you could change the arrow size so you have a couple of really cool options um, to look at different post-processing results so we are going to now move on to the refine stage so I'm going to stop the simulation over here and we will talk more about setting up a conjugate heat transfer um, boundary condition when we go to the refine stage so we see the explore stage results here uh, let's switch to the refine stage now when we switch to the refine stage we will notice that the results from the explore stage are no longer valid um, that is because the solution needs to be recalculated with the help of the CPU and also the flagship solver which is um, going to solve under the hood in this case fluent um, so let us go ahead and take advantage of this refine stage and set up those extra thermal boundary conditions that allow for conjugate heat transfer so I'm going to go ahead and click on solid thermal. Now when I go ahead and choose this option you will notice that there are certain thermal boundary conditions that I can um, apply to my geometry to my domain uh, using this heads up display. So I'm going to go ahead and insulate um, the valve endings and then the rest of it will be assigned a convection boundary condition. Uh, assuming that uh, it is exposed to the atmosphere so I'll assign a 10 watt per meter square Kelvin uh, heat transfer coefficient so let me go ahead and do that for the sake of convenience I'm going to hide the fluid domain and let me go ahead and choose the insulated surfaces Now the moment I assign this insulated boundary condition you will notice that there's also the convection boundary condition that gets assigned to the rest of the solid surfaces um, by default. Now these are all the remaining solid surfaces the ones that have not been assigned an insulated boundary condition or are not participating um, as a fluid solid interface 
adjacent to the fluid domain. Anytime you want to verify that your boundaries have been selected accurately, you can just hover over that particular boundary condition and it will highlight um, the bounds of that particular face or that boundary. So you can see that only the outside surfaces that are exposed to the atmosphere are selected for this convection boundary condition. Now, if I switch to the explore stage right now, you will notice that there are a lot of these conjugate heat transfer boundary condition settings that become inactive and that's because the explore stage does not allow you um, to solve for conjugate heat transfer or coupled heat transfer. Uh, in order to solve this sort of um, physics, you need that extra fidelity, you need that extra mesh refinement uh, to be able to accurately predict results. So we've come back to the refine stage. Um, one more thing that I want to do is assign um, extra refinement uh, to all those areas, all those faces that act as the fluid solid interface. How do I do that? Well, in the refine stage, you have this fidelity section on the top over here, and you will notice that there are two options called global sizing and local sizing. If you hover over these options, you'll be able to learn a little bit more about what these uh, icons allow you to do. So I'm going to choose local sizing for all the faces um, that are adjacent to the fluid domain so that I can get a finer mesh quality in that particular region. So let me go ahead and assign the local mesh sizing to the regions of interest. For the sake of simplicity, I will hide the solid body over here and then we will select the local sizing from the fidelity section and uh, I'm going to do a box select for all the faces of the fluid domain because that would include my inlets and outlets and also um, all the faces where I'm expecting heat to transfer from the fluid domain to the solid domain. So. I'm going to assign an element size of 2 millimeters and uh, after entering the value I hit enter um, and uh, on the left over here in the physics tree you can see that there's a fidelity adjustment setting that has been added and that is how you can verify that your um, sizing has been included in the simulation setup. So now that we have the solid thermal boundary conditions and the fluid thermal boundary conditions. I am expecting the heat to be transferred from the fluid domain to the solid domain and we should be able to get a temperature on the solid walls as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the solve button over here and just like in the case of the explore stage you will notice even in the refine stage in the simulation information display or the SID, um, there's a green progress bar um, that's steadily and slowly moving along the periphery of the hexagon. Now once more than half the perimeter of this hexagon is green, um, that is when you can have the visibility to your mesh. So here, if I click on the show mesh option, you will notice that um, my mesh that I have refined and specified uh, for the refine mode becomes visible. So the fluid domains you will notice are much finer than the solid domain because we assigned um, that extra fidelity at all the faces that acted as interfaces between the fluid and solid um, domains. So the simulation is still running. It takes uh, a few more minutes than it would take uh, in the explore stage because keep in mind that for this particular solve process, it is your CPU that is being used and not your GPU, which is also the reason why you cannot see real-time simulation results in the refine mode. 
And keep in mind that this mesh is only visible because this is the refine stage. Uh, if we were solving in the explore stage, then we would not have the visibility uh, to this mesh. So I'm going to stop the simulation over here uh, just so that we can look at some of the post-processing quantities. And uh, typically you would let the simulation run until the entire parameter of this um, SID or hexagon turns green, which would indicate that your convergence criteria have been met. So I'll go ahead and hit pause over here. And it takes a minute um, for the solutions to populate. So let me deselect the mesh and wait for the contours to show up. So here you can see that by default the temperature contours are displayed and this is displaying the contours uh, not just of the fluid domain but also of the solid domain. As expected uh, we see some temperature variation throughout the fluid and solid um, volumes and if you wanted to find the temperature of any one particular location you could simply hover over um, that particular point. And on the right, if you notice in the contour region, um, specific values get highlighted and that tells you, um, you know, what sort of temperature you are expecting in that region. The contours are also a good way to ascertain what's your maximum temperature in the domain. Sometimes if you're looking uh, to, you know, solve for failure modes, etc., then this sort of a post-processing capability uh, can prove to be very useful. Um, now, when the contour is set to temperature, you will notice that some of these other post-processing um, results are not applicable. But if we switch from temperature to flow variables such as velocity, then these other post-processing quantities become visible as well. So right now it is showing you the velocity contours uh, in the fluid domain. You could also look at the vectors. And I'm going to... increase the arrow size and also the number. You could also look at the particle flow to understand how the flow is behaving. If you are looking to do CFT uh, simulations for applications wherein you have to de detect uh, recirculation zones or dead zones, then this sort of a post-processing um, capability can really be beneficial. So all in all, we were able to set up uh, a conjugate heat transfer problem in ANSYS Discovery very easily, uh, successfully, and have some extra capability available to us in the refine mode wherein we were able to specify a certain mesh density for our regions of interest. Uh, another thing that I wanted to point out is that in the refine mode, you have some extra additional capability uh, as far as um, setting your um, flow simulation is concerned. Uh, for example, if you notice here, uh, because we're in the refine mode, uh, we have some additional fluid flow options and in the brackets refine mode is mentioned. You could specify the modeling method, choose a different turbulence model, 
uh, choose a different convergence setting. Uh, so you have a lot of flexibility in dictating the terms um, of your overall simulation. As soon as you change the settings of a particular simulation in ANSYS Discovery, um, you will notice that the contours that you got from your previous result sort of become faded. And this just indicates that you know, you've changed a setting, you've changed a boundary condition, so you will need to resolve your problem. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep this at laminar. And uh, one other thing that you can do is specify the monitors um, to evaluate convergence or perhaps, you know, uh, monitor any desired quantity of interest um, that would dictate whether or not your design is improving as you keep uh, iterating uh, different uh, design variations. So for example, let me select um, the pressure at the inlet and we can perhaps look at the sorry let me select the fluid domain and not the solid domain so if I wanted to measure the average um, pressure at the inlet I can go ahead and do that and it would give you a value for the first iteration that you ran now if I were to change the boundary conditions for example at the inlet, if I were to change the boundary condition to 0 0.6 meter per second and then resolve the iteration, it would give me a different data point and I would be able to track the changes over multiple iterations whether they be design iterations or different parametric conditions, um, whatever changes you make, you will be able to track the changes uh, in your desired quantities of interest uh, through such monitors, through such graphs. I'm running this simulation on my personal computer. I have a quad-core computer, so um, this is a small problem. Uh, the mesh count is not very high, but depending on your application, depending um, on what sort of mesh density uh, you are hoping um, to include in your simulation, um, the simulation time may vary uh, quite a lot. If you have any questions about the hardware requirements for ANSYS Discovery or if you have questions about the differences in licensing for the Explore stage and the Refine stage, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. Our contact information will be available towards the end of this AVA. Um, we will be happy to uh, have a chat with you and uh, give you a little bit more information about ANSYS Discovery. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the simulation just because I want to showcase the ability, not so much worry about the accuracy of the results. So now that we made a change in the flow velocity at one of the inlets, uh, we noticed that we got another data point after that simulation was stopped. And I think we increased the velocity. Um, so the pressure increased from iteration one to iteration two. And that change is also indicated um, by this red triangle over here. Um, so this red triangle basically indicates that your pressure at this particular phase increased from iteration 1 to iteration 2. 
So if these sort of quantities um, uh, are acting as your metric, uh, you're looking for um, such output parameters to ensure whether your design is moving in the right direction, uh, then ANSYS Discovery is a great tool um, to you know, quickly do the analysis and make some changes um, so that you meet your design goals so that you have the best possible design. Um, so with that, you know, I think I'm going to conclude this demonstration and we are going to go back to my presentation just to summarize what we learned today and also talk a little bit about the upcoming AVA, uh, you know, that is going to be hosted by John Dow. To conclude, um, we learned today that ANSYS Discovery can be used very conveniently, especially by design engineers or even analysts to drive rapid design exploration and innovation, especially in those preliminary stages uh, when we want to reduce our time, reduce the cost uh, to come up with the best possible optimal design. ANSYS Discovery allows for thermal analysis, allows for coupled heat transfer, conjugate heat transfer, um, through fluid solid interfaces. Uh, so it can be used for a wide variety of applications. And if you need more information about how ANSYS Discovery can help you solve your engineering challenges, please feel free to reach out to us. And lastly, if you need that additional accuracy, if you have complicated geometric features, uh, if you need that extra level of refinement, um, please feel free to use the refined mode in ANSYS Discovery to solve high fidelity simulations uh, that not only allow you to enable mesh refinement, but also allow you to use the ANSYS flagship solvers under the hood. So with that, I conclude um, my session today. Uh, as always, if you have any comments, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to you know, reach out to us, leave them in the Q&A box below. Um, your suggestions and feedback are really valuable. Um, thank you so much, everyone. I will speak to you guys soon again. Bye-bye.